I'm so excited to bring you this Pinterest inspired DIY tutorial and I'm sure you've seen this picture on Pinterest. When I first saw this picture, I immediately knew that I wanted to make this project, but I needed to find a more practical use, something that Keith and I actually needed in our home. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today, is how to make a decorated jar that can also be a soap dispenser. So we'll break it up into steps. You can either do one or the other. You'll be able to learn how to just decorate glass jars, but also if you wanted to, how to make the top soap dispenser part. on Pinterest says that you should use a glue gun and I read some other people who tried using like Elmer's glue. I tried both of them when I was making this project and they are incredibly hard to work with. They come out really messy. They don't stay where you want them to and especially because we're going to be writing letters. You really want something that's going to come out very neat and very precise. So the three-dimensional fabric paint really, really worked to the best. If you're like me, I don't have very nice writing. I needed a cheat sheet for the nice cursive letters that I was going to be using. So I went ahead and printed off my words that I wanted to do on in a nice, beautiful cursive print that I'm going to use as my guide. And I do recommend this is a little bit of a messier craft, so having some scrap paper nearby to cover up your surface so you don't actually end up ruining whatever table you're working on is a good idea as well. Step one is take off the lid of your glass jar. If you're doing the cheat option, you'll need a piece of tape that's just slightly longer than whatever word you're using. Put the tape sticky side on the back. Tape the word inside your jar and place it where you want it to go. So this is really important. Try to make sure that it's level. I think that's pretty straight, so that's good enough for me. You're gonna start with your three-dimensional fabric paint. And if you've never used this type of paint before, I definitely do recommend practicing it a few times, either on a sheet of paper or if you have like a jar, like an empty food jar that you're not gonna use anymore. If you are using this and this is gonna be your only attempt, just have a paper towel nearby, maybe with a little bit of water. And if you do make a mistake as you're drawing on your jar, you can just easily wipe it off. It says it's quick drying, but let's be honest, it's not super, super fast. You will have time to kind of go back and correct mistakes. And then you're literally just going to trace the letters in your fabric paint. When you are doing the letters, you wanna make sure you can see, I'm not the, the nicest paint squeezer writer in the world. So this is where the toothpicks come in really handy. You can use these to better define your letters and you know, even out any sort of bumps that you have to make it look a lot more clean and sharp. You can see there, that's the B after I use the toothpick to touch up the edges and the inner space of the B. You can tell the lines are just a lot sharper and it looks a little bit less messy. I'm gonna go on now to do the other letters. So this is what it looks like after I've done all of the lettering of the word. And I've also went back and I did a second layer just because the way that you're going to see the word in this case through the paint is through its 3D dimensional facts. So the thicker that it sticks out, the better. Once you've done all your lettering, you're going to set the jar aside and let that dry for at least an hour or so. If you are making a soap dispenser, you'll need to grab your lid and your little soap pump. You're gonna measure the length and the width of this plastic part inside. So in my case, I'd say that's about three quarters of an inch. Mark the center of your lid, and then you're going to divide your measurement in half. So in my case, I'm dividing three quarters in half, and I'm just gonna mark half of that distance from either side of the center on all four sides, so four little corners. You don't have to worry about being too exact because we'll do a little test of this after we draw it out. So you should have something that looks a bit like that. So you can see I've drawn four little lines that between here and here measure three quarters of an inch and same thing here and here. Now to just make it easier to cut this out, I'm just gonna connect all the lines to draw a little circle. So there's my very roughly drawn circle. And now you're just going to take your X-Acto knife and cut that circle out. Okay, so there's my very rough 
circle cut out, you can tell. I'm not very good with an exacto knife at all. So you're just gonna test to see if it fits. Ideally, you want this little rim part to sit on the top of the lid and everything else to just poke through. So now, once you've made sure that that fits and everything's all good and it sits exactly how you want it to, you're going to take your glue and outline this little rim with the glue. You don't have to be very exact. I'm just gonna put a bunch here. And this is again where your toothpicks will come in handy because it's a very thin surface. So I'm just going to take the toothpicks and just push that onto this thin little rim to make sure that it's actually on there. Once you've got a nice thick layer of glue around the bottom of that rim, you're going to just push it down onto the center of your lid. We have a little piece of paper towel. You can use that here too to just wipe away the excess glue from around the outside rim. One thing you also wanna do is measure the depth. So this is at least about an inch and a half too long. So I'm just gonna measure up about an inch and a half and just take a pair of scissors and cut it right off. And that's good, so now it will close. Make sure that's pushed down nice and hard. And then once again, this one you're probably gonna want to sit for at least you know three to four hours, depending on what glue you're using. So put your little soap pump to the side and let that glue harden. Okay, so now is the most fun part of this project. It's where we get to spray paint. So. Let's go to my laundry room and we'll get spray painting. I'm actually filming in the stairwell because someone was doing their laundry and I thought that would be weird to spray paint around them. So I apologize if it's a little echoey in here. I have my dry soap pump and my written on glass jar. The first step is we're gonna do the primer coats. This is, the, as I mentioned, is the frosted glass. You can see it is the rust oleum frosted glass. And once you've shaken it up, I always start by doing the glass down like this because you want to get to the bottom and everything like that. And you're just going to do a light coating to make sure that all the sides and all the letters are covered. And what's good about doing it on a plastic bag is you can actually turn the plastic bag as you go to make sure that you get all sides, especially if you're working in a small space like me. So this frosted glass coat, as you can see, gives it kind of a dirty looking finish and you'll actually see the full frosted effect once it dries. So now that we've done the glass base, we're going to do the soap pump. And I actually just use the lid of the spray paint to just rest the soap pump on so that you actually can get at all sides. Okay, so that should be enough for now. So I'm gonna let this sit again for at least an hour. Sometimes you might need to do a second coat of the primer or we'll just go straight away and start to do the first coat of our colored spray paint. Now it's had a little bit of time to dry and it definitely has this frosted glass effect. So as I said before, I'm doing the metallic tone color. So it's the exact same technique. So we'll shake it up, hold it about eight to 10 inches away and just spray it all around. So once you've coated both of them, uh, again, let it sit for about three to four hours. So I'm probably gonna let this sit overnight. And then you should be okay, but you might wanna check you may need the second coat. So. We'll check back in a few hours and see how they're doing. So I let it sit overnight to make sure that the paint dried and I also made a couple of other colors. So here's what the finished product looks like. I think they're all super, super cute and the different colors really do have a totally different effect. So I did notice after about a week of using the turquoise spray paint that along the top um, of the soap dispenser, it, the paint did start to crack a little bit. And it's most likely because I don't know if I picked a water-based spray paint and this type of plastic was probably not the best to use without sanding it first. It did have a little bit more of a glossy finish, but the actual paint on the jar part has been totally fine and hasn't cracked at all. Now I did try using a hand brushed acrylic paint instead of a spray paint, so this one was just a 
plain acrylic paint that I brushed on with a little paintbrush and then I covered it all over with a sealant varnish. And I still think the look looks really cute. You can definitely see the brush marks a little bit more. So I would probably, if I did it again, I would only use the spray paints. This one I'm just gonna keep as a plain jar for putting some cotton pads or hair accessories in the bathroom because I think it's super cute as is. Anyway, this was a super, super easy DIY tutorial. So if you decide to make it on your own, please send me your pictures on Twitter. I'd love to see how they turn out. And if you like this type of DIY video, make sure to thumbs up underneath and leave a comment if there's any other Pinterest inspired or DIY projects that you'd like me to try and film a tutorial for. Don't forget to subscribe. I put out new videos every Monday and Friday and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.